That is not an evidence to be able to call upon the Prophet wasallam. That is a narration and it's authenticated by the scholars, that version of it. And there are other versions of that too. But that is a dua the Prophet wasallam mentioned to us. That you recite within the prayer. And it can be recited in that way. But the scholars have explained that Shaykh Al-Fawzan in his explanation of that and others. This is not a proof that you are calling upon the Prophet wasallam. Asking for intercession, asking for your dua to be taken to Allah. And that is, as we said before, you always look at the principles of Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah combined between the evidences to understand the ruling. Ahlul Bid'ah, the innovators, they will take select evidences by itself and derive the ruling. So when you put this narration together with the other narrations of the Sunnah, it becomes clear that it is not indicating to you the permissibility of calling upon. The Prophet ﷺ with your du'as, etc. Because when you look at the other narrations, the famous hadith of Ibn Abbas, or regarding Ibn Abbas, the uncle uh, uh, Abbas himself indeed, when they required to make the du'a for the rainfall, after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, they didn't go and ask the Prophet ﷺ for that du'a. They didn't go to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and ask him to make the du'a for the rain to come. They went to Abbas. Why would the companions avoid or miss or leave out going to the Prophet ﷺ if it was permissible to make dua to him? Why would they abandon that and choose instead to go to Abbas? Why would they choose to go to Abbas عنه, over and above the Prophet ﷺ? Is that something conceivable? Why would they do that? Because there's only one reason. They knew it's impermissible to go and ask. The Prophet ﷺ. Whereas when he was alive and there was a drought, they would ask him to make the dua. They would go to him then when he was alive and ask him for the dua to make the dua, etc. But after he died, they knew it was impermissible. And that's why they didn't go to him and they went to Abbas instead. If these people are going to say it's permissible to make dua to the Prophet ﷺ, ask him to take your dua to Allah, intercession, etc. Then they need to explain why the companions abandoned doing that. And instead went to Abbas. Why would you do that? Why would you abandon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Ask him to make a dua if that's permissible. Why would you leave that and go to somebody else who is not a Prophet? Even though his rank and status and from the relations of the Prophet sallallahu He's not at the level of Prophet sallallahu The Sufis will have to explain why the companions decided not to go to the Prophet sallallahu And to go to someone else instead. Makes no sense. The only reason they did that was because they knew it is impermissible to call upon the Prophet ﷺ after his death. They knew that. And that is the only explanation. You cannot explain it in any other way. You cannot explain it and say that there was any other reason. That cannot be. What reason can there be for you to say you've got a choice between the Prophet ﷺ and anybody else, even Abu Bakr. That you would say, I'll choose Abu Bakr or any of the other companions over and above the Prophet ﷺ. There's no possible explanation except that they knew it's impermissible. It's not from the Sunnah to ask the Prophet ﷺ for dua after his death. If that was the case and it was from the Sunnah, they would never have gone to anybody else. They would go straight to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and ask him. So the fact that they didn't do that shows they knew it was impermissible. So these types of narrations, Ahlul Bid'ah, they take them independently, separately by themselves, without the context of the other narrations that clearly highlight the impermissibility of seeking intercession or seeking dua from the Prophet ﷺ after his death. For greater detail, you can look at Kashf al-Shubuhat, the book of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, the removal of the doubts or the exposition of the doubts. In that book, he highlights and explains this issue in detail. Why it's impermissible to call upon the Prophet ﷺ to seek intercession. That isn't the way of the Sunnah, that isn't what we've been taught. So these are doubts that they bring. They select these types of evidences and these are doubts. But when you put them together with the rest of the Sunnah and the narrations, it becomes clear.